Sorry about the glare, but today I'm going to be helping a friend replace their microwave oven. And I just want you to look at this area. Before I drop this old one out, I want to point out the areas that we're going to be protecting. Microwaves do not weigh a lot, but I'm going to be protecting the top of this stove all the way around. And the countertop areas. And when I set the old one down, I'm going to put it on a countertop. These cabinets are like mine. And you get the Bolero music for free. This has to come out because you're going to take this out. You don't want this loose. So take the. Um, the, the um, tray on the bottom and the roller thingy out before you drop the old microwave. Alright, again apologizing for the glare and just reminding you to listen to Bolero music while you're doing this. <laughs> um, just to reiterate the turntable, tray, and roller thingy is out. Plug the microwave, taking off this vent pipe, it's a top vent to wall pipe and these are the pads that I have for the top of the oven and stove and the burners and the sides. The microwave again does not weigh a lot but it is very very ungainly. Nothing on the floor, the footing needs to be good and so there may be a stool here. I may need to reach up, so I may need to put a stool here, and I don't want the feet to slip on anything. I'm gonna drop this older microwave out, but we're gonna do it in a two-stage process. You can use the box that the microwave came in, but you're gonna have to cut it down. This is just a box that was here that I think was the right size for this, so. It's going to be dropping down onto this and then away, which is going to make it a little bit less cumbersome and ungainly when it comes to dropping this out. This one had three screws in it. Now this is a direct replacement for this old one, the one that we're getting a new one. So I've got two screws out and I'm going to drop this and it's going to pivot out and down towards this and then hopefully if all goes well we're going to lift it up and then set it on this box and then thread the power cord through this hole. So here's the old microwave resting on the box, the edge, the outer edge and it dropped out okay and I took the opportunity to thread the power cord out and look here, see this block? This is a beautiful thing because this spacer has to be here. Otherwise, this is called a basket nut. When you put the new one in, if there's no spacer here, it will pull up on this material and pull that basket nut right out. It'll just, it'll ruin the top of the, the new microwave. So, um, I'm guessing this was a professional install that was done maybe during that track, it's an old unit, but there's one on either side that's gonna save a lot of hassle when we put the new one in. So if you don't have blocks like this in between the space here, you're gonna have to put something in. If it's a solid piece of wood, for some reason I don't see how that could be possible, but anyway, just make sure that it's about full dimension. This isn't gonna go far and you can see and I will tell you that those screws going into this basket nut were tight, tight, tight. So it didn't disform them at all. And uh, that means I'm real happy with those spacer or filler blocks. Here's the top of the new one. And here's the top of the old one. Unfortunately, the layout for these screws is not the same. So 
depending on the manufacturer and stuff, just check that on your own. See if with any luck you have uh, the same layout that way you don't have to drill any new holes. But I'm going to have to. I love the brackets that they have here. Unfortunately, they're not going to work for this new unit. These tabs on the bottom don't line up. They're not even close. So this is going to go and I'm going to put a new one in. This is the bottom rail and so I did put a torpedo level on this. This is a toggle and these are wood screws. And <clears throat> I put blue tape on here to keep the new unit from getting scratched and we lifted it up here. It should be okay but I'm going to try it. This is a top template. This is really a pain in the butt to put in. There's a little strip of paper that goes on the back. Now obviously I have the hole cut uh, uh, for the vent and also the the power cord that was already done but don't forget to cut this little piece of strip and look at that arrow. Make sure that arrow's right up against the wall there. So we've got blocks underneath there, holes are drilled and uh, gonna get ready to lift this into place couple little touches on this top area before I put the vent in. These washers are my modification. They don't come with them, but I totally recommend them. This is just particle board, so I brought some of these along, and uh, I'm much more confident that they're gonna hold with the weight load spread out on these washers. Also, these are the old fastener holes, and uh, Ah, uh, these are saw cuts here. So I just filled those with some dap. If I remember and I'm back in the area someday, I'll fill those, put another coat on. But dap's really super sticky. And uh, doesn't shrink all that much, so it's white. I just cleaned all the shelf, obviously, too, while I'm up here. I did not really need the uh, blue tape. It didn't scrape that much. Got it in first time, I was so happy. Uh, but marking, these vertical markings here, the vertical tape, um, were for marking uh, studs from the previous installation. Those guys had gotten some meat with their screws, so I went ahead and just marked those. And that was really helpful too. I don't know if I mentioned that in another video, but anyway, the blue tape's a good idea. Didn't really need it, but better safe than sorry. Before I put the vent pipe in, I just want to show you what it looks like before I put it in. This is flange at the bottom, so I'm guessing that's necessary. There were so many gaps here that I actually went back with fiber tape and uh, silicone and just sealed this up really good. It looks ugly, but it's going to be facing the wall, so I don't care. Anyway, they um, formed the pipe to fit in the opening, so um, they did the best they could, but obviously it's going to be pretty leaky, so I just sealed that up real nice. For Sealing the vent pipe in the back, it's kind of hard to see, in fact, impossible, but um, you can see the tape there. I basically put the tape on first and then bent it out so that when the pipe went in there, it would stick and sort of form a gasket. It's not going to be perfect, but I used 3M duct tape. It's very, very sticky. And then these, uh, outer pieces I was able to hand form on myself. As far as the cord goes, I'm not going to seal that hole up, but I did put the cord into a coil, used a washer on a 5 16 self tapper, which is not what it comes with. There was a real weak little tiny screw there. Coiled it up really good and just left this top um, part of the duplex outlet open in case somebody needs to use that. I don't know why they would, but Anyway, this cord's out of the way, and that's why I didn't put it in the top. 
Someone needs to plug something in there they can, it's easy to get to.